If you're on my Patreon, then you already know everything I'm about to say. If not, stay tuned. Now, over the last couple of videos, I've talked about why Apple would make glasses, basically a face-mounted computational display, and what could get people like you and me to actually buy a pair. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the rest of that series. One thing I haven't talked about though is the developer story, apps. When the original iPhone launched, it came with only the handful of apps Apple had given it, including the last minute edition of a YouTube app. Henri Lamoureux's software team had just finished a forced march, a marathon of sprints to get version one ready to ship, only to have to turn around and start another forced march for version two, this time to get the frameworks ready for the SDK event and the app store ready to launch. Umpteen millions of apps and billions of dollars later, it literally made apps mainstream, as popular as music and TV. So it should come to the absolute surprise of nobody that when the original Apple Watch launched, it had not only the apps Apple had given it, but kinda, sorta, an app store as well. Back then, on that first version, the app store lived on the iPhone, and so did the app logic. Only the interface and interaction layers were projected onto the watch, all based on Apple's pre-existing extensibility frameworks. Now, thanks to Kevin Lynch and his team's own forced marches, Apple got the app logic onto the watch in version two and brought the store on device for version five. And sure, it's fair to say that while there are some legit terrific Apple Watch apps, wrist-based apps in general just haven't proven as popular or as critical to the watch's success as they were to the iPhones. Subject for another video, let me know in the comments if you wanna see that. But the same process, the process of projectables could prove even more critical and more valuable for Apple's next small thing. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is the potential for Apple Glasses apps. Please don't call them glaps. There's this common misconception that iOS just doesn't multitask very well. It does. Go back to the very first demo when Steve Jobs played music, surfed the web, checked email, took a call, and then the music came right back on to see just how well it multitasks. Because of course it does. It's built on the same Unix underpinnings as Mac OS. The difference has always been that Apple tightly controls the processes and what can and can't multitask on iOS. And they do that because they are absolutely paranoid about battery life. Only Apple's own apps had any kind of background access at first. Then only a tiny handful of specific APIs like streaming music and turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Then things like background refresh. And now, while it's still by no means a wide open wild wild west of multitasking madness, pretty much every kind of app can persist in the background, at least for a little while. RIP bloated cross-platform social and gaming apps. Likewise, iOS has also always had the potential to handle headless apps as well. That's where interfaces and feature sets could pop up as remote views in the system and inside other apps. Because again, same Unix underpinnings as macOS. The difference here is that Apple didn't even start porting that functionality over until later because they were even more paranoid about security. Then came iOS 8 and extensibility, which I've often said was one of the most important developments in iOS since, well, iOS. With it, apps maintained their secure sandboxes, but direct user interactions, things like tapping a button, could poke a small hole in them, just big enough to bring up a share sheet or widget or photo filter or custom keyboard or document provider or, you get the idea. When that happened, iOS would pull the interface and data from the container app and present it to you in the host app so you could quickly, easily send a photo to Twitter, swipe down a calculator from anywhere, or just get your Bitmoji on, all while never letting it mingle with the actual host app so no one could try and trick you into giving them your personal private information and content. Now, this was never part of some test bed for Apple Watch apps. It wasn't part of a master plan. But when the watch team was trying to figure out how they could enable third-party apps on a device as constrained as the original Apple Watch and realized they'd have to securely decouple app logic from app interface to do it, wow, was extensibility handy. Same thing in principle for AirPlay, even CarPlay, to get your data from device A to device B without anybody else being able to snoop it. Just like when websites were broken down into web services that could exist on any site, Binary app blobs were broken down into specific functions that could be called from anywhere. Google, which values the cloud the same way Apple values local, has been doing something similar with app fragments for years as well, because a good idea is just a good idea, at least in theory. If you have to wait for an old school watch app to spin up like the worst FTL drive, 
or an app fragment to download, you know it just never turned out nearly as well in practice. Except it kind of did, just not for whole apps or big functions. It turned out really great for a bunch of other stuff we still use every day, including an especially rich notifications and on the Apple Watch, rich complications. Part of that has to do with transmission. Locally, Bluetooth has gotten way better, but we can still block it with our own ugly bags of mostly water body parts. From the cloud, even modern Wi-Fi and cellular protocols can and do fail us all the time. Part of it has to do with compute power. Even the latest Apple Watch can't run apps, especially heavy apps, as well as an iPhone, iPad, or Mac. And part of it has to do with interface. The Apple Watch screen is just so much smaller, it makes touch that much harder, and the digital crown is basically a scroll wheel minus the mouse. Apple glasses will likely be just as susceptible to wireless interference, have far less compute power, and even less interactive potential and precision than an Apple Watch. Now, that's not a showstopper, far from it. Just take a look at AirPods. AirPods are every bit as dependent on a wireless connection. Even AirPods Pro and their fancy 10 core audio engines have far less compute power. And when it comes to interface, there's precisely zero screen and only a capacitive squeezer several to work with. Yet they can relay calls, Siri commands, turn-by-turn -turn directions, workout instructions, even incoming messages. And somewhere, somewhere in the middle there, somewhere in the land of rich notifications and complications is where I think glasses apps will lie, at least at first. Actually, if you go back to the original Apple Watch, glances would probably be an even better conceptual fit for glasses than they ever were for watches. Developers would get the glasses as an extension to the existing APNS, Apple Push Notification Service, for quote unquote free, where it just works, but with some additional effort and customization could work just even better. And also for glances. So for example, a guided workout app could pull data from your Apple Watch and show it to you in your peripheral vision so you can see your stats without having to pull up a sleeve, pull down a glove, or take your hands off your ski poles, rowing machine, or kettlebells. Same thing with walking directions, Apple tag detection, and a host of other features that, again, may not be as functional as they would be on the watch, much less on the iPhone, but far, far more available and far less obtrusive and frankly, rude. Like you'll be able to check an event reminder or a to-do without even having to lift or turn your wrist or reach for your phone in front of anybody else. The reverse may also be true though. Developers may be able to pull from the Apple Glasses sensors, particularly the LiDAR sensors, to make things like indoor mapping, item location, guided workouts, and other things, maybe even some level of location and spatial-based gaming possible without you having to hold your iPhone or iPad up for extended periods of time. And yes, absolutely, there will have to be things like a driving mode, which cuts out any and all distractions when the glasses detect a certain velocity for you in general and the shape of a steering wheel in front of you in specific. There's already a crude version of that on the iPhone, but, Believe me, no one wants an LL Cool J is going live Insta alert while you're careening down a highway in a blizzard, including LL. Now maybe, just maybe, one day Apple Silicon team will have a G4 or G5 system and package powerful and efficient enough for fully on board, always connected apps, like something straight out of an Iron Man movie with a voice driven Siri interface that's finally as functional as never mind Jarvis or Friday, but Google or Alexa. I have a whole entire rant brewing on that. So if you wanna see that video sooner rather than later, hit me up in the comments or just chat with me anytime on Discord. That's just one of the perks on my Patreon. And yeah, I've got Patreon now. I went indie just over a month ago, remember? It's at patreon.com slash Renee Ritchie. When you sign up, you can also choose the early access tier, which lets you read the outlines and scripts for these videos before I even film them, much less upload them and put them live. Also the full video versions of my podcast, which take a lot of time to edit, but I really love how they turn out. There are even ways to get your name in the description of every video, in the credits too. To get even more involved in this community and to contribute directly to the creation of these videos and future projects, check out patreon.com slash Renee Ritchie. And thank you, sincerely, for your support. So here's how I think Apple Glasses apps will play out, at least at first. Apple will announce the glasses with support for pulling notifications and glances pushing sensor data like LiDAR, and fine-grained visual verbosity controls to provide information but prevent distraction. Maybe with a cool demo from Twitter, Peloton, Pokemon Go, whatever's trendy and looks really compelling. But the glasses will be far more of a display than a computer when it comes to third-party apps, again, at least at first. And then, 
like the iPhone and Apple Watch, the glasses will be iterated on and improved over time until, yeah, I start to dream of Edith all over again. Now I'd love to hear from you. So hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already, hit share if you have, and then hit up the comments and let me know. What sort of apps would you want to see on Apple Glasses? And what type of apps would you absolutely not want at all, ever? Thanks for watching and check out this playlist, this playlist, one of these playlists with all my other previews. Just click and I'll see you next video.